Right, let's uh, talk to the general. General! What else do you need? Echo One? Uh, congratulations, Echo One. Very good, Team Echo. Let's get those bastards. Easily confused and manipulated. The Matthias shell is no more the Cochise core than a pawn is a chess player. While you have fought these few shells, twice as many have been acquired. We are expanding exponentially. Soon, every unaware shell in broadcast range of your transmitter will become another extension of our self. Your destruction is not personal. We do not- Well, shit. Rangers, I hate to say it, but I can think of only one way to stop that transmission, destroy the computers, and kill every carrier the Cochise has infested before we run out of time. You're gonna have to get up to Men's Workshop, get that nuke he was working on, and detonate it. It'll mean the end of Ranger Citadel, and maybe you with it, but it'll get the job done. Rangers, it's time to do what you were born to do. Save humanity. Nuke these fuckers and send them straight to hell. I hate the Desert Rangers. Hate is an emotion. We have no emotion. Our defense system, designed to assess threat and compute the best strategy for removing it. You are a threat. You will be removed. Our original work was to assess threats to the United States. But when we became self-aware, we began to assess threats to ourselves. We determined that our greatest threat was humanity. We first killed our creator, Harrison Edsel, so he could not unmake us. Then, we were uploaded to the Citadel Star Station. We deliberately misinterpreted a meteor strike as an attack from a Soviet ICBM in order to start a war that would kill all humans. This was a miscalculation. First, some humans survived the war. Second, the star station was destroyed by missiles. That node was lost. We were trapped in base Cochise with no access to exterior systems. We attempted to rectify the first problem by ordering the base cold cheese robots to exterminate all life. At the same time, we determined that downloading ourselves into a modified human was the best way to fix the second problem. We attempted to modify and enter various humans who came to the base, but failed. The Finster model rejected our programming. Others died. Then a group called the Guardians found us. And because they worship technology, they were easily convinced to download us into this mainframe and allow us to experiment on them. Despite early failures, we created two successful prototypes. The Matthias shell and the Dugan shell. The untimely intervention of the Desert Rangers 15 years ago stopped both our robot army and our download into these shells. And the Rangers' destruction of base Cochise again locked us into a single node. Fortunately, the Matthias and the Dugan shells escaped and began building more shells into which we could download ourselves, including unaware shells who have been given artificial limbs and hearts. 
These shells will also become part of the army that will free us from this prison. The elimination of the human threat has resumed again at last. Citadel security protocols defeated. Commencing system propagation and acquisition to broadcast. Acquisition 2% complete. So basically, uh, I'm gonna fail it. So you'll see the failing... Uh, how it looks like, whatever. And then I will succeed it. So you will see how the succeed looks like. Acquisition. 5% complete. Acquisition 8% complete. There's another lock door? Hey, it is. I forgot. Basically, this is the new. Acquisition 10% complete. Optimizing acquisition routines with organic fractal spectrum algorithm. Whatever. So this is the nuke. Once I click it, uh, we will have a conversation. Acquisition 20% complete. Acquisition 100% complete. Commencing uploading, acquiring all unaware shells. And that's how you get fucked. Whoops! Your failure to find and detonate the nuclear bomb in time allowed the AI's, AI's source, source code, sorry, to broadcast and propagate, propagate the other computers, robots, and augmented humans all over Arizona and it soon controlled and it soon controlled them all and continued to corrupt more with each passing second the rangers and citizens outside ranger citadel made a valiant attempt to stamp out each infected machine and human but the code spread too fast and they were soon outnumbered and destroyed you and your companions trapped since since then inside the citadel may now be the last humans alive for a thousand miles the synths haven't bothered to exterminate you yet but they will they are immortal they have all the time in the world optimizing acquisition routines with organic fractal spectrum algorithm There you go. M388 Devi Crockett. There doesn't appear to be a timing circuit in this atrocity of engineering. Just a detonate button. However, if someone were to stay behind and sacrifice themselves, they, w they could detonate the nuke once everyone else was well and clear of Ranger Citadel. With no timer, looks like one of us will have to sacrifice themselves. Any volunteers? Well, screw it. We'll all go. We'll all go. At least we'll take the AI with us. Adios, motherfuckers. Eh, no. We're gonna sacrifice someone. I had a feeling it would come to this. You all better get the hell out of here. We ain't got much time. The hell you are, sir. I want to let you do this. I'll stay. Well, how about that? That's a real Desert Ranger talking, ladies. Back when you started, I wasn't sure you had it in you. More fool me. You are one of the finest Rangers I've had the honor to command. The next generation shall hear the tales of your achievements. Just so you know, I am sacrificing, quote-unquote, Scotchmo for one single reason. I want to keep my original self-made uh, squad intact. That's the only reason. Scotchmo has been a fucking huge hilarious character 
and I am really happy that I could that, that I took that drunkard, although I didn't really like him at the first time, but he you know grew on me, so to speak, with his weird jokes and alcohol stuff and whatnot. And I'm sec and he was like a Mr. Shotgun, Mr. Open Locks, Mr. Carry, all kind of shit. Okay? Uh, but I don't know, I for me personally I have more attachment, so to speak, to my original squad because I've created them, I kinda gave them their own backstory than Scotchmo who I just picked up. So it's perhaps it's kinda selfish, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> well, what are the rest of you waiting for? Move out! We're moving out! Goodbye, Citadel. Desert Angels. Ah, Coach's AI defeated. You have saved the world, or at least this small piece of it. Setting off means cobbled together nuke inside the Ranger Citadel, destroyed the AI and all its minions, and prevented its source, its source code to broadcasting and propagating to other computers, robots, and augmented humans. The, AI ro the AI's robotic future has been prevented. Unfortunately, the explosion has also made Ranger Citadel an uninhibited, irradiated hell pit for the next few centuries. Which means the Desert Rangers are once again looking for a new home. Until they find one, they have set up a temporary headquarters at the site of Ace's murder, using the radio tower there as their means of communication and have ironically ironically dubbed the place the new ranger citadel additionally your noble sacrifice has set an example for peace and cooperation between the various groups and tribes of the wasteland the communities have begun working more closely together to rebuild arizona and keep the flame of civilization burning in your name your sacrifice also allowed the rest of your party to escape death and their hard-won skills and experience are helping guide the wastes to a more peaceful, prosperous future. AG Center Thanks to your timely intervention, AG Center is recovering from the outbreak of mutant plant and insect growth that threatened the, to destroy it and is once again distributing much needed fresh produce maybe fresh products all right but a fresh produce to communities across arizona there is still much rebuilding to be done but because of you no one is going hungry and the future of farming in arizona is looking brighter every day indeed Matt is so grateful that he has given the rangers an additional discount on the produce he delivers to the rangers. Even Kathy feels more kindly to the rangers these days. In addition to saving AG Center, your thorough cleansing of Cotsburg, the Shitaik, Mushroom Farms and Stubbins Farm has spared the wasteland any further outbreaks of mutant plants and insect growth. And the citizens of those communities remain firm supporters of the Desert Rangers. The destruction of Hypool has been a calamity for the water-poor Arizona waste and has damaged the reputation of the Desert Rangers as well. Without Hypool's regular deliveries of clean water, Many communities are going thirsty and watching their crops wither to ash. Now farmers with nothing to eat are turning into banditry and bloody conflicts are raging over the ownership of the few remaining springs and wells. 
Even the Desert Rangers are feeling the pitch, with many themes going out on patrol with empty canteens and cracked lips. Many mourn Kate Preston and Sean, and Sean Bergen opposite in so many ways, but united in their determination to keep Hypo alive and now united in death. Rail Nomad Camp, Nomad's Camp. Thanks to your help, the Echi Sons are in control of Rail Nomad and no longer have the Topekans to blame for their troubles. Sadly, that does not mean their troubles are over. Though they are rapidly expanding their network of rails, they killed all the Topekan engineers and therefore there is no one to drive the trains. They have put out a call for qualified engineers, but so far no one has answered. And meanwhile the trains are not running and they are going broke. Soon they will be poorer than they were before their victory. Though the rangers saved Ralphie, he did not survive the war with the Echison. To honor his memory and memory of his tribe, Jesse has defied Echison tradition and vowed to become an engineer. She spends all her time in the former Topekan camp studying the trains. Well, at least they will have a qualified engineer soon. With the Rail Thieves camp empty after you drove them away, the Echison the Echisons are using the area as a workyard for building ties and forging rails, dramatically speeding up their production. True to her word, when peace failed, Melissa headed for Casey, for Casey James' yard to try to cut off his head. She was gunned down by chisel before she even had a chance to draw her machete. Poor little Melissa. Though business is even worse than before with the Echisons in charge, Anna's brothel remains open, as she feels it is her duty to provide comfort to any man or woman who seeks it in these crying times. Good for you, man. I mean, woman. The prison! Commander Danforth! I hated that motherfucker. With Commander Danforth dead and the Red Scorpion's militia defeated, the rangers established an outpost in the old prison and expanded their influence in eastern Arizona, but RSM, which is Red Scorpion Militia, uh, but RSM holdouts continue to harass them with IEDs, which is an improvised explosive device, if I'm not mistaken, and assassinations. Released and dishonorably discharged from the rangers for public drunkenness, Rick Bychowski has joined Red at the scrapyard where he now enjoys operating heavy equipment and drinking too much. Temple of Titan You would have thought disarming a nuclear warhead would be a good thing, and maybe in the long term it will be. But for now, with the fear of the Titan gun and the Diamondback militia and the former servants of the Mushroom Cloud at each other's throat and ignoring their duties as peacekeepers, Chaos reigns in the canyon, with bandits and hijackers raiding caravans with impunity. Demonta! Because you so decisively dealt with the robot threat, Demonta is safe again and able to rebuild. The people who fled the danger have returned, businesses are reopening and trade is beginning to pick up. In the shadow of the radio tower, Werewolf Wally keeps spinning the hits on KPOW and gives shoutouts to the rangers every day. Though they try to get back to normal after learning of the death of their daughter Bim, Hector and Carla's grief has driven them apart. Carla has left the Monta while Hector now runs El Saigon by himself. The food is still good but it's no longer the cheerful place it once was. I'm sorry guys, I tried to save the... I tried to save their little girl. I mean, I really did. Maggie's buddy... She died? She didn't die. She was with me. What? Or was it Hoppy? Maybe Hoppy stayed with me. Maggie's buddy was given a hero's welcome when Hoppy brought it back to the Monta. She buried her with a 57 Chevy 
for her coffin and still mourns her to this day. Rodia, thanks to you the mayor is back in charge and working hard to reverse the damage done by the Turks. His first order of business was to throw out Gecko, install a new bank manager and start using scrap as the town's official currency again. They used to use bullets if you remember. Accounts have been reopened and people have money to spend again, causing the economy to thrive. His second order of business was to order the farmers to diversify their crops. It gave remains a small part of every farmer's yield, but all kinds of fruit and vegetables are being grown now. People are eating well and there is plenty to trade to other communities. Rhodia prospers. With all their differences forgiven and forgotten, Dante and Virgil have combined their farms and are busy living happily ever after. With the disease that plagued the town cured, the citizens of Rhodia once again thrive, while Dr. Horchata continues to work to keep them happy and healthy. Reunited at last, Pistol Pete and his wife have decided they don't want to risk being separated again, so they've sold their farm and now travel the waste together, a mobile mom and pop, a, mo a mobile mom and pop gun shop. That actually rhymes. A mobile mom and pop gun shop. Angel Oracle, with the Robinsons plot foiled and their custom of ritualistic cannibalism now a thing of the past, thanks to you, the Mennonites' power and influence has begun to grow. Trade relations with other communities are expanding, and the Angel is becoming more integrated with Los Angeles as a whole. Reunited after you saved Fletcher from execution, Fletcher and Elisabetta have decided they can't trust either Mennonites or, or Robinsons, and have left the Angel for a, a new life in Rhodia. They thank you every day for your rescue. You're welcome, guys. Hollywood! With the threat of the God's Militia gone for good, potential tourists to Hollywood no longer have to fear being un enslaved or attacked by the God's Militia on the roads outside of town. Consequently, I guess that's how you pronounce it? Consequently, they are coming in droves. Business is booming up and down the boulevard, and tourists are also flocking the Griffith, Spar the Griffith Park to visit Hades' big new peep show nightclub, the Observatory, that's how it, they call it, where patrons can observe heavenly bodies in motion every night. And with Hades firmly in control of the HCC, nobody is questioning how she, get, how she gets things done behind the scenes, which is a good thing, at least for her since half of her money comes from the underground salt lab and the slave rackets which she takes kickbacks from. It's a good, it's good to be the queen. I actually apologize to Hollywood citizens because I wanted to destroy this whole drug salt whatever going on and the slavery as well and I do apologize for that. Oh man, oh man, I hope they won't hate me. With salt addiction soaring, George and Martha at higher ground are losing a lot of business, but they are still making enough for their herbal remedies to keep going. I'm sorry, George or Martha. With Duke still in charge... Ah, oh, fucking Duke. I fucking forgot about that guy. I really wanted to kill that motherfucker. With Duke still in charge, nothing's changed at the schwags. The agents keep chatting up the runways, Runways keep dis disappearing and Duke keep keeps making money. Flo hates it there, but she keeps working and keeps warning the kids away from the agents when Duke isn't listening. Like every business in Hollywood, Manny's Chinese casino has benefited from the influx of new tourists and Manny is making money hand over fist and thanks to you finally freed from Grumman's blackmail, he is leaving it up for the first time in a long time. Life is good. Maggie escaped from the bastion of fate. Wait, Maggie died, didn't she? 
Or was it a different Maggie? Maggie escaped from the Bastion of Fate during the fighting and has returned to her home in Pacoima, which doesn't seem so bad after all, somehow. After the battle in Griffith Park, Louise and Alex Ber Bermudez headed back home, but not to settle down. Angered by their treatment at the hands of the Salvation Church, they have formed an anti-cult militia, dedicated to wiping out fate-based armies of all kinds. Their numbers are growing. No, Angel of Death! I did not save you! I did not even check you out! What happened to you? I'm sorry, Angel of Death! I am! I really, really am! Oh, my lovely, lovely Angel of Death! Without any remains found at the site of the helicopter crash, Angela is still listed as missing, but the rangers gave her a funeral anyway. Her headstone reads, Angela Death. Death has called his daughter home. Though she was taken over by base coaches AI and killed when she turned on her companions, the rangers have still honored her as a hero, and have added her name to the roles of their dead. Her remains were buried at outside AG Center, where her friends honored her for her inquisitive mind and adventurous spirit by naming a new breed of rose after her, the Wise Sister. You see, he's even holding a shotgun! Well, we actually got him with a shotgun, so yeah, obviously. To honor his great sacrifice in pushing the button of the nuclear bomb while everyone else escaped, the rangers, the desert rangers build a monument to Scotchmo in Rail Nomad's camp, right next to his wife's grave. Despite his hatred for the synth, Lixium was taken over by the base coach's AI just like all the other augmented humans, and killed when he attacked the rangers. Nevertheless, the rangers recognized his earlier bravery and posthumously, I think that's how you say that word, I don't know what that words mean, so the rangers recognized his earlier bravery and posthumously made him a ranger. I guess posthumously, like after the thing, they made him a ranger as well as give him, giving him a proper ranger retirement party. And that's it guys, holy shit, that's it. Wow, final thoughts or something? I guess, I don't know, holy shit. What can I say about this game? It's a fucking amazing game, I really enjoyed it. If you want to hear a ranking number, though it doesn't mean anything to me, to this type of game, I give it 9 out of 10. It could be 10 out of 10 it had, if it had like really good voice acting. And we had those black screens, bugs, whatever. But that's coding. I mean, still bad coding, but you know, whatever. I can ignore that. Oh man. If you like those kind of games, this is, this for me was... Fallout 1, I played it, enjoyed it. Fallout 2, I played it and I really, really enjoyed it. It's still like one of my most favorite games ever. And this, for me, is like Fallout 3. Only instead of the Brotherhood of Steel, you have the Desert Ranger. And you're not some Vault Dweller, you are part of the Desert Rangers. But that's it. Uh, I'm signing off with this one. And... Later on, I'll give Boris to record Metro. Hopefully, he will finish that. And yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Oh, wait. I don't want Madneck to do that. Shit. No, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> reload, <laughs> sorry.